All right, you ain't got to respond to your haters. You ain't got to respond. My boy told me the other day, some teacher told him, like, you know, you can't do this. You're not smart enough. You're not intelligent enough. Like, I don't even know why you decided to get in this program. Like, you can't do it. And my boy was talking to me. I'm like, look, shut up. I don't need to hear what my man said. That's on some negative stuff. Look, let your work speak for you. Like, quiet, my man. Shut my man up. Shut him down. How do you shut him down? You don't shut him down by talking about what he said. You don't shut him down by talking about, you know, how you feel about what he said. You shut him down by working. So I need y'all to do me a huge favor. All right. Bruce Lee put it best. He said, knowing is not enough. We must supply. Being willing is not enough. We must do. So I told you, second quarter living. We're not talking no more. Second quarter living is about application, all right? It's about taking it to the next level. It's not about talking. It's about doing. Xbox, put it in the mail and send it home. Your cell phone, cut it off. Facebook, Twitter, if it's not helping you academically, cut it off. You're about to immerse yourself in your academics. You're about to go to your professor and ask, what's going to be on the test? You're going to look around at all those smart kids in your classes getting 4.0s, 3.5s, and you're going to hook up and say, what do I need to know? Listen to me, you're about to immerse yourself in it. You're cutting off all distractions. Everything that's not going to help you to pass this fight. Listen to me, there'll be plenty of time to play PlayStation, baby. Kenny Rogers used to say, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. You don't never count your money while you sitting at the table. There'll be time enough to count it when the deal is done, baby. Are you hearing me? After you take your final exam, you got time for PlayStation. So when you talk, right, when you say, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a track star, I want to be an artist, I want to be a rapper, like whatever you say out of your mouth, that one word will require thousands of actions. Hear me and hear me carefully. You got to be careful doing too much talking because whatever it is you say, whatever it is you say, I want to be an NBA all-star. I want to win a Super Bowl. When you open up your mouth and say that, there are, do you understand how many push-ups you got to do? How many reps you got to do? Do you know how many stretches you got to do? Do you know how many plays you got to practice? When you say you want to be a lawyer, do you know how many cases you got to sit through? Do you know how many uh, books you got to read? Do you understand how many classes you have to take? Do you understand when you say you want to be a registered nurse? When you say a nurse, you know how much clinicals you have to do? How many chapters you have to read? Do you understand how early you have to get up? You are about to immerse yourself in your studies. You will only concentrate. You will only focus on the things that are going to help you with your final examination. You're not doing any leisure right now. You will have time for the leisure later. How much, how much work do I have to put in to make this happen? Because it's not going to happen just because you talked about it. It's not going to happen just because you said it, right? So do me a huge favor. You've wished enough. Enough wishing. You've wished enough. You've waited enough. Now let's get to work. You can't go back. There's no options at this point. We're in the fourth quarter. It's do or die, baby. We do not have time. We about to go get it, right? It's ours for the getting. You're in school. You can do it. You're in school. You were smart enough to get there. You're smart enough to get out. You can do it and you're not leaving. Listen to me. We ain't going home. We ain't going nowhere until we get the degree. You ain't going nowhere until you get it done. And so we're going to lock everything else down for the next two weeks. We shutting it down. We shutting it down. And do we doing what we got to do to get what we got to get? It's time for application. It's time for execution. If you want your future, then keep listening. If you do not want your future, leave the room. Stop listening to me. Do something else on the internet because here's the thing. There are going to be days where you're going to be so inundated with responsibility and you are going to want to completely let go of the vision of the dream, but as bad as you want to hold it in your hand, you're going to want to let go of it all and quit. And I don't care if you have to listen to me 10,000 times. If you have to listen to this in your sleep, write it down, read it every day until the dream becomes a reality. This is the power of discipline. The race is not given to the swift nor the strong. 
but it is he that endures to the end. They say that discipline is doing what you hate like you love it. For some of you, it might be reading. For some of you, it might be exercising. I don't know what it is that you hate, but do it like you love it and do it daily. Perseverance is what kicks in the moment you want to quit. Perseverance is what kicks in the moment it gets hard. Perseverance is what kicks in when your mind attempts to manipulate you and tell you that you don't have what it takes, that you've done enough, that it's over, that it doesn't take all that, that you can get by with a C. Perseverance says absolutely not. Perseverance will hold your standard when you're tired, when you're weary, when you think you don't have anything left in the tank. Perseverance says, let's go. Are you with me? Perseverance says, let's go a little higher. Perseverance says, let's push for the A. Perseverance says, 20 more yards, 10 more yards, five more yards. Perseverance says, I was made to touch down. I was made to win championships. Perseverance says, my design is not to break down. My design is to keep pushing. Discipline is found in our daily routine, our daily rituals. You may use discipline on occasion, but you're not disciplined. And there's a difference between having discipline and being disciplined. When you have discipline, you're selective. When you have discipline, you're conditional. It depends on how you feel. When you are disciplined, how you do anything is how you do everything. And everything you do, you show up at a thousand percent. Everything you do, you execute with a spirit of excellence. That's what discipline looks like. Seize the moment. Lean into now. See the power, the beauty, the brilliance, the privilege in now. There are people who are dead and gone and they will never be back. And if they could come back, they would kill to live your now. So be thankful for now. Love your now. So if you're still consumed by what happened last year, last month, or even yesterday, guess what? You are holding up your progress. You are holding up your progress, but your future self wants you to get up. You have to believe that you control your destiny. Don't put that responsibility on anyone else but you. It's either gonna be focused on the future focus on the present or focus on the past. That's it. And I can tell you from personal experience that it's easy to get off track by focusing too much on your mistakes or focusing too much on your missed opportunities or focusing too much on what disappointed you or who disappointed you. What you don't want to do is put so much energy into what happened that you miss out on what is happening. You should be in such a zone that your mind is only programmed to look forward. It's time for you to recognize the person that you are being is not the person that you have to be. It's time for you to be more motivated than you've ever been in your entire life rather than settling for what you have. Chances are you didn't wake up one day and think, I just want to be a mediocre person. I want to be like everybody else. No, you had a burning desire to learn, to grow and evolve. The problem is that you settled into a world that said, it's okay to be comfortable. It's okay to stay where you are. But the fact is, if you're staying where you are, you're going backwards. You see, to be motivated means to move through things. The word motivation comes from the Latin of motive. What is your motive for doing what you're doing? Let's be honest. You have goals. You have dreams. You have ambitions. We all do. We are what the Greeks called teleological. We are goal-centered creatures. We need targets, things to aim for. 
but most of us are just settling for things that don't give us the greatest joy. The fact is, we are all here to grow, to evolve, and to contribute. Jim Rohn famously said that the difference between us and all of the other animals on the planet is that we have the dignity of choice. A tree doesn't think to itself, well, you know what, I've had enough of growing, I'm just going to stay here. No, it does what it is meant to do. Every living soul, every living cell lives for one reason. It lives to grow, to express itself fully. Every day when we're not allowing ourselves to be who we are truly capable of being, there is a part of us that is dying. The question I want to ask you right now is, who do you want to become? See, I recognize early on in life that life ain't just about the decisions that we make. You know what I'm saying? I'm a high school dropout. It took me 12 years to get a four-year degree. I was homeless, eating out of trash cans, living in abandoned buildings in the D. If you don't become who you're supposed to come, like people gonna hurt. Like if I didn't hit the reset button in life, who knows where the team would be like. There's something inside you. And so this is why we do what we do. So we're gonna do, we're gonna get the right information and then we're gonna get narrow focus and boom, we're gonna go for it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's it. I haven't reached the highest height. The Nobel Prize is what's next. What you getting ready for? What's next? What's next for you? Many of you will not be successful because you've got this giant goal and no steps to go with it. You're just in your mind like, girl, this is my year. How many steps? I don't know. Like, what is it going to take for you to do it? I don't know. If some of y'all, you got some homeboys you connected with, but you know they ain't really living how you supposed to be living and they leading you down the wrong way, you know if I remove myself from it, if I plug in with positive people, I can make it. Listen, I want for you what we experiencing. And some of you, you're so cocky, you're so arrogant. People have been wiping your butt for the longest. You think you're deeper than what you are, and you're about to lose this doggone opportunity. And let me tell you something, I don't care how deep you think you are, get hurt and find out you are replaceable. You are replaceable. And if you don't think you are, you make some phone calls and find out. I know you suffering. I know you're hurting on the inside. You're wondering why. Like, why this gotta happen to me? Why I got experience this? Why this person had to take advantage of me? I promise you, you are turning into a warrior. Because the stuff that you're going through, the stuff that you have to experience, what don't kill you makes you stronger. If you look at the cat that goes to the gym and he lifting weights and he pumping iron, if you ask homeboy, hey bro, how you get so big, they gonna tell you, it took a whole lot of time and they had to go through a whole lot of pain. And life is gonna grow you. Listen to me right now, life's going to grow you. It is not going to be easy. It is going to be painful. It is going to be frustrating. You're going to shed some tears. you probably going to spill some blood. It's going to hurt, but you got to keep pushing. It's the faith that stands behind that purpose passion desire that got you getting up every single day after you've been knocked down today yesterday you may be knocked down tomorrow and nothing gonna change if nothing changed so you have to take action and when i say take action you have to self-assess and say it is you versus you when you can look in a mirror and you can say to yourself, I didn't study, I woke up late. When you can say it's me versus me, when you can get very comfortable being very uncomfortable, you begin to grow. You begin to grow and you don't go to pointing fingers at nobody. Man, I remember I was stripped of everything I owned from apartments to cars, Everything I came in contact with, I mean, I was stripped of. But all through, through them storms, them trials and them tribulations, I began to soar like an eagle. See, the eagle is one of the only birds that when a storm is coming, he doesn't fly away, but he flies into the storm. 
and he uses the pressures of the storm to soar. We're using very little energy to soar above the storm to, to rise to an atmosphere of peace and security. Don't you want to soar? How would you use the storm to rise, to elevate? How would you use the storm to soar above everybody that told you you couldn't do what you're doing? And what drives you? Because it don't matter how hard you go when you're on a journey to go get what's yours, you will be knocked down. And I hope it's the faith that gives you the unwavering conviction, the courage, the dedication, what you sacrificing. Because being physically committed to the process without being emotionally attached to the outcomes is flying into the storm. And asking yourself, what can I extract from this storm to soar, to rise? to an atmosphere of peace and security. We gotta, we gotta go to work. We gotta go to work. Because if I can get you to identify how much energy you put in others and in other people's dreams, and I can get you to pull back, and I can get you to do what you were born to do, what you were created to do, whew, now, why, why is dreaming important? I don't care what level you get to. I need you to dream, right? I need you to, guys, I need you to spend a considerable amount of time dreaming every single day. Let me tell you why. I've noticed that the people who dream and those people who dream big have a different kind of life than the people who don't dream. So if you were here and you're like, I'm scared, whatever you do, do this for me. Do not sabotage yourself with fear. Fear is not real. That's something in your brain. Like, it does not exist. How do we get over it? You get over it by dreaming of what you can be. Come on, y'all got to hear what I'm saying. There are those of you in this room, you spend a majority of your life doing what other people want you to do. You don't even know who you are. And so even what you're doing, you're not doing at 120% because you're doing what somebody else wants you to do. And you're not, that, you're not good enough to be somebody else. So I need y'all to do me a favor. I need, you to give, I need you to be selfish on the dream piece. Because what you have to understand is when you know who you are and you start operating that, you're going to start blessing people in a way you couldn't bless people before when you didn't really know who you were. See, this is the teaching the millennials need. This is what the millennials need, guys. The millennials have rushed right into what they thought we wanted them to have. And that's cars and that stuff. Why? Because a generation before, for some of us, Right, it was a working class, or so they were they were in poverty, guys, and so the, the, the they grew up watching their family work hard to get stuff, and so now we're wondering why they just want stuff, 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 because that's all they've seen in their homes, that's all they heard. They've seen their parents go out and bring to buy nicer houses and get better cars than grandma had, better stuff. So I'm, I need you to be selfish on the first tier, and that's dreamy. I need you to be real selfish because you can't help anybody else. You can't do for anybody else if you are if you hurt. You want you know what's so funny? We want people to make guarantees to us, but we're not willing to make guarantees to ourselves. Now, for real, I'm gonna say it again. Like you, somebody gave you a guarantee, thirty dollar, thirty day guarantee. In 30 days, if, they, if you don't make what they told you was gonna make, in 30 days, you got an attitude, you want your money back. But you've never demanded your money back from yourself. You've never looked at yourself in the mirror and said, you let you down. Until you get to that point, you let you down. You've never, you're not brave enough. You want to put it on somebody else. The reason why I'm not successful is because of my boss. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and said, I'm not getting up on time. I'm not going to work on time. I'm not putting in 120% when I'm at work. I let me down. You just said you're giving 50%. You owe you an explanation. You owe you an explanation. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, why are you only giving 50%? What's wrong with you? You need to put yourself on punishment. You need to tell you no more TV, no more snacks, no more desserts, no more. No, we working out now. No, no more alcohol. Not right now. Not. No, I can't handle it right now. You need to tell you that you owe you something.
So listen to me. There are those of you saying, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be the best at this company, right? But your value system says you believe in sleep more than you believe in grinding. Your value system says you are a consumer and not a producer. That you're spending more money than you're making. Why? Because you're a consumer, but you're, you're reading all the books and you're saying everything the books are saying. But those books are not in alignment with your values. And if you're going to go to the next level, your values are going to have to change. Nobody ever told them to dream. Nobody ever told them that DNA is in their dream. We told them that their DNA is in their money. This is why you're fighting right here. Listen, kid, there's going to be time in your life where people are going to try to rain on your parade. They're going to try to tell you what you can and what you can't do. But this is why you're fighting. You fight for them. You fight for all them nights you've watched your mother sit on the edge of that bed and cry almost every night. Well, you and your brother, they couldn't do anything and it hurt you, you remember? Listen, I don't want you to ever forget why you're doing what you're doing. You gotta understand, there's so much greatness that lives inside of you and if you just get through this and continue to fight, there's greatness on the other side. And I understand that you may be in the dark today, but doesn't the beautiful roses of the field begin in the dark? What you gonna do? You gonna give up or you gonna keep going? What is it that stands behind that passion, purpose, desire that has you waking up every single day to go get what's yours? Because my faith is bigger than the size of a mustard seed. And whatever it is that stands behind that passion, purpose, and desire that has you waking up every single day, what is it? What is it that gives you unwavering conviction to go get what's yours? To do what you want to do? Because there was a point in my time in my life where I didn't have a faith in myself, where I didn't believe in myself then. I began to pick myself up, dust myself off, so and I ask the question, what is it that continues to drive you, push you, to continue to get up every single day after you've been knocked down? You've been here before. Is it your daughter at home? Is it your mama? Because as I reminisce and watch my mama sit on the edge of that bed and cry every single night. Are you back yet? Because whatever it is that does stand behind that passion, purpose, and desire that picks you up every single day, it better be strong. And I'm talking you will be knocked down. A storm is coming. You will be exposed to the elements. A tornado is coming. If there's something that you want to do with your life, that thing deep inside you that whispers day and night, it will always, always just be an idea until you choose to believe it's possible. You have to believe it so much that you already think it's happened. You have to walk like it's there, talk like it's there, believe it's there. People are gonna think you're mad. They're gonna look at you and think you're insane. They're gonna tell you like it ain't possible. It's risky, you shouldn't do it, be careful. I'm here to tell you today that you can have anything you want. Follow your dreams. These people have to see to believe it, but you need to believe it to see it. Be anyone you want. Believe that you can do it and work hard to get it and it's yours. Never wait and see to believe it. Believe it and you'll see it. Be you. You're amazing and beautiful and everyone deserves to see the real you and who you want to be. It's a scary thing in the world we live in today to be yourself. With so much fake perfection out there on social media. 
But I'll tell you this, it's also the best feeling in the world when you go through life knowing you ain't what other people's made you, but yourself. It's liberating. There's freedom in it. So stop hiding and be yourself. You're either moving forward or standing still. The choice is yours. Decide. Talent does not win championships. Work ethic does. We watch those who work. We're motivated by those who work, but we never put in the work. And so if there's anything that's broken in you nine times out of 10, it is the law of application. It's not really ringing true in your heart. You're still in your feelings. You're still in your emotions. You're still locked in your paradigm of preferences. And the moment that you break free and stop doing what you feel like doing and do what you must do to get the job done, that, and at that point only, will you be able to see the future. The future is gonna cost you everything. Mr. X is whatever success looks like for you. Mr. X is a portrait, a picture, an example of whatever it is success means to you. And, I'm, and I want to be the first to tell you, if you didn't know, the elevator doesn't go to the top. You cannot take the elevator to the top. You might get to the 20th floor, you might get to the 30th floor, but you're not going to get to the 40th floor or whatever floor your success is on taking the elevator. At some point in time, you're going to have to take the stairs. And so the moment that you start to take the stairs, boom, that's when the adversity hits. You got to be willing to take some no's. You have to be willing to get rejected. You have to be willing for people to lie on you. You have to be willing to be dragged through the mud and through murky water. You can't take the elevator to the top. At some point, you gotta take the stairs. And when you take the stairs, you're gonna learn a lesson that the elevator could never teach you. Rejection does something to you. Hardship does something to you. Conflict does something to you. The elevator can't teach you the lesson that the stairwell teaches you. But I bet you this, by the time you get to that 40th floor, by the time you shake the hand of Mr. X, you will be prepared to sustain what you work for. Everybody always talks about getting to the top. Everybody always talks about going after their dream. But nobody talks about retention, retention, retention. And the work that is required not only to get there, but to stay there and go to the next level. And so the mentality you're gonna to have to have if you're going to win, if you're gonna conquer your day, conquer your week, if you're gonna win the year, I need you to remember that talent does not win championships, work ethic does. Here's the mentality you're gonna need, that nobody's gonna outwork you. I'm sorry, I love you, but you're not gonna outwork me. I'm with you, but you're not gonna outwork me. We're connected, but you're not gonna outwork me. We can dream together, we can lean in together, but you're not gonna outwork me. We may be in the same class, but you're not gonna outwork me. Number one, I need you to have the made up and fully persuaded mind that nobody is gonna outwork you. Stop sitting around moping and complaining and waiting for somebody to connect the dots for you. Put the work in and take the stairs to the top. Ask yourself the question, what are you known for? I need you to become notorious for service, notorious for work ethic, notorious for finishing what you start. You got to be willing to lose sleep to go after this dream. You have to be willing to lose sleep to graduate. You have to be willing to lose sleep to pass the exam. I need you to have a whatever it takes mentality. If you want to win, you're going to have to get upset sometimes. And I'm not talking about uh, a non-productive anger. I'm talking about a massively productive disappointment. You're going to have to get disappointed sometimes with where you are. This is what I like to call proactive disappointment. I'm upset with where I am. I'm upset with what I have not accomplished. I'm upset at every time I have allowed myself to be distracted. Get upset. Get disappointed with yourself. You're upset with the moments in your life where you allowed yourself to sink into depression, where you allowed yourself to become distracted. Get upset. Get flat out mad about where you are. Don't get mad to quit. 
get mad to keep going. That's the problem is that you have to rewire and redirect your anger. I'm not going to be upset and quit. I'm going to get mad and stay in it. From this moment on, I need you to give it everything you have. Show up and play at the highest level of yourself every single time. If you're going to put the work in, if you're going to give it everything you have, all the blood, all the sweat, all the tears, give it a thousand percent. This is the only way you are going to make it to the top. You're going to have stairs called confusion. You're going to have stairs called rejection. You're going to have stairs called misunderstanding. But keep climbing. You're going to have sabotage and betrayal. And people are going to lie to you. And people are going to give up on you. And people are going to write you off. Listen to me. Before you get to the 40th floor, people will write you off. People will count you out. But I need you to climb every stair, every obstacle that stands in your way. Because when you get to the top, you're going to meet Mr. X. And after you meet that X, it's going to be another X. Whatever your X is, define your X. You got to be willing to be punctual. You have to be disciplined. You got to be the first to get there and the last to leave. You have to invest your time wisely. I need you to maintain a balanced lifestyle. You have to develop a hunger for mentorship. You need to develop a hunger for wisdom. You need to develop a thirst for correction and constructive analysis. You need to stop having a problem with being corrected. So my budget for empowerment and education must exceed my budget for entertainment. You may be discouraged, but work. You may be tired, but work. You may be overwhelmed, but work. People may have doubted you. People may have written you off, but work. You may not feel qualified, but work. You may feel underestimated, overlooked, and undervalued, but work. If you want to win, you have to work. You got to work with tears in your eyes. You got to work when nobody understands why you're working so hard. You got to work when you don't feel like it. And one of the things I need you to do from this moment forward is to get out of your feelings. Because if you only work when you feel like it, you won't get much done. Destiny is not about how you feel. Destiny is what you're called to do. It's what you are anointed to do. It's what you are assigned to do. It is an appointment that none of us can afford to miss. Accept the fact, whatever you're going to accomplish, it is going to require hard work.